recipe is called teriyaki chicken, chicken teriyaki. And we are going to cook the chicken with the vegetables at the same time that we are going to steam this lovely bread. So just put it in here, put your aroma on. And then the next thing that we have to do is uh, you can add as well with the chicken, you could add as well, for example, mushroom, but I'm going to skip that for the moment. And um, then we just set our Varoma to 20 minutes Varoma temperature at the speed one. I'm going to do this. I'm going to finish this recipe in another Thermomix away from the microphone. Otherwise, with the noise of the Thermomix, probably you might not be able to understand that clearly. So I finish this recipe in the next one yeah. and Sarah's going to start with the next one. Yeah, that's the great joys of having two thermomises in your kitchen, isn't it, Maria? <laughs> so for those of you that are wondering, okay, so what was you talking about, about six dough, one dough and six recipes? So the dough is the pizza dough. We are going to make it. It's a very, very easy recipe. And you're going to see today how easy it is to make six different recipes. One will be the bread rolls that Maria was saying. And what we want to show you with that recipe is how many of you, and this idea, maybe they can put in the comments. We would love to hear how many of you use the Varoma, even if the recipe doesn't say it. Basically, placing the Varoma tray on top of the bowl even if the recipe doesn't instruct it. And by the way, all the recipes we are doing today are possible to be done manually or with cookie dough, if you have cookie dough, on the TM31, on the TM5, and on the TM6, okay? So I'm gonna start making the next recipe. It's gonna be the recipe that we were talking about, the dough. So how can we use the dough? How can we make it? So I'm gonna use the basic cookbook. If uh, some of you might have the green one from the um, Thermomix TM5, and if not, you have it as well in the uh, TM6. And what I'm gonna do is how to make the dough. Very easy, you will see it only requires a couple of things. Water, also flour, sugar and salt, and oil. Okay, so Maria, do you want to show them how to do the yes. recipe? So we're going to do this recipe, the two of us together, because when you go to yeah. the recipe, the recipe tells you 220 grams of lukewarm water. So you don't go anywhere and you just say, hit the water. So you add the water, the 220 grams. Okay. Come on, let's do it together. Let's do a cook off, see who makes okay. it faster. <laughs> And then what you do, you just come out of the recipe. So you just go to hold the little house uh, picture on top. So that brings you to the main dial. And you're going to heat up your water in your thermomix. So you're just going to select like, you will do it in, in 40 seconds. Because remember, if you heat up your yeast more than 37 degrees, you're going to kill it. So then we just put 30, 40 seconds and I select 37, and I put it at still one and a half. And that is going to warm up our water to get it ready for the yeast. So when we don't fill it, and our dough is going to be like, okay. Yeah, so that's one of the things. For this recipe. That is not in the recipe, but you can do it. You just can heat up the water in your thermometer. Okay? Yeah. That's Maria's way of making the recipe. Imagine you are at home and you don't have a strong flour. Maria, how could they make with normal flour at home? They that want a strong flour. So what you do is you just put the amount of flour that is required in the recipe, and then you're going to program 15 seconds at the speed 10. So what that is going to do is going to fluffy all your, um, all your um, flour. It's like if before when you used to do this thing by hand, you, before you have to sift the flour to make it very thin. But the mommy can do that for you. You don't have to do it. Okay, so then my, my, my water is heat up and I know because in here is so 37 degrees and then I can go back and it's warm. I can go back to my recipe and continue from there. So then it tells me to add sugar. And that is important once I get the sugar because when you add sugar to the dough and your yeast, the sugar helps to activate the yeast. So we just put one spoon of sugar. In the recipe, it says that you can also use malt, malt powder, powder. But I don't have it, but I just use the sugar, okay? So then I go to the next, and I use, in my case, I'm going to use fresh yeast. 
So it's 20 grams, but if you're using the dry yeast, it's just one sachet, the little box. But Sarah, I'm showing you there. I'm using the dry yeast. It's always half, okay, of the fresh yeast. So in my case, I'm, I'm using one sachet, which is around seven to eight grams, depending on the brand. If you use the fresh one, like Maria, also a tip for you, if you decide to buy uh, the fresh one and you are not gonna use it in a couple of days and you feel like you would use it, freeze it, freeze it in a small square, freeze it in a small cubes. So then you can just, the amount that you're gonna be using, have it frozen and add it straight into the recipe and that works for you as well. So keep that in mind that even if uh, you buy it, you don't use it straight away, freezer and it will work for you. So the way Maria was saying, I think it's very important about adding the sugar, even if it's for a pizza, there is the same if you make the pan rapido, the Spanish, the fast bread in cookie dough. And again, everybody knows how to translate now recipes in cookie dough. And if not, go into our cooking journey. And the Cire had a lovely uh, video of showing you how to use Google app on your phone. Or I also did a live video where I was showing you how to use Google Chrome in your laptop to, to translate all the recipes from whatever language to uh, all, all the 66,000 recipes really that are in the platform. You have access to them and you can translate them. So Maria, you are nearly there. I'm the same, okay, Give me, let me do one I bit more. more. I have pick up my yeast, so I can add uh, my, uh, my flour. And again, remember, if you don't have take this flour, that, that is a strong flour, you can use your normal flour with a little trick that I told you, 15 seconds at the speed 10. And then it's asking me for olive oil. So that is 30 grams of olive oil. So remember that the oil goes a little bit slower than any other liquid. So you just add it slowly. Let's take a tear here first. So on the- Yeah, so they, they, yeah? Do you know the tip I tend to give them is when you are adding the oil, in thermomix, less is always more. So I tend to go five grams, five milliliters, less than what the amount requires on the screen. So then because of the density of the oil, it takes that few more seconds. So then what you will notice is it will stay in the amount that you are aiming for rather than go over. So always reduce less than what the amount is required. And then you will have it very accurate. That's the accountant in me showing up. <laughs> okay. So then the recipe is asking us for a teaspoon of salt. And again, salt sometimes when you're doing a, even a cake, they say, why would you put salt? But salt helps the actual dough, even the mix in the cake. So to bring up the flavor better. So we put the one teaspoon of salt. Yeah. And then we are going to need this. So remember the kneading function is in the thermomix. But if you're doing yeah. a recipe that is guided recipe, you just go next step. And the dial is going to change with a whip with a with wheat throwing on it. So you just, yeah. it's already set up two minutes. So we just turn the dial and it's going to need for us for two minutes. Okay. You can talk because with the noise rolling, you don't hear a problem. In the meantime, I just wanted to say I'm having a look at the chat and I just love it because there are so many different comments. Some people use the Veroma a lot, some people don't really use it, some people only use the recipe, some people use it uh, freestyling. So this is good. It's fantastic to see how everybody is doing because we're going to give to be giving tips about that. Uh, this evening so keep tuned everybody because if you don't really use the Varoma much you will get some inspiration and if you don't really off-road you will get uh, ideas for that as well and if you're already using the Varoma in an spontaneous way then you will get you will get even more suggestions Yeah, like one of the things, I don't know if they can hear me, so I might wait until we finish the meeting, uh, two seconds. One second, I'll, I'll wait another 10 seconds and I'll, I'll tell you something about the Varoma, actually. We hear you well, uh, Sara, it's fine, you can talk. Yeah? With, yeah. Okay, okay. So a couple of things, and I would like everybody tonight to maybe make an, an agreement with, with us 
about using the varoma, okay? The varoma can become your best friend. Anytime you are cooking a recipe, okay? When you are using varoma temperature and you are cooking more than seven minutes, the varoma can go on top and can be steaming whatever you are making from bread to vegetables, to meat, to fish, to cakes, anything you want. If you ask me, okay, Sara, but how do I know how to do it? Go into your book, the book that came with your thermomix, the first few pages and the last few pages will have a lot of resources to let you know if you are steaming how many grams, the quantity that you have to use depending what you are cooking, also the time, and you will always be using Varoma with minimum half a liter to a liter of water and a speed one. So if you are not using the Varoma, make friendship with it tonight and promise yourself you're gonna start using it. Sometimes will be maybe steaming vegetables, other times you might get more uh, maybe adventurous and start the papillote way of cooking where you use um, a baking paper and you make little parcels. There is the, also the ramekins. You can also steam cupcakes if you want to do there with maybe the silicone molds. So the Varoma is becoming your best friend from today. See it like that. There is no way you can mess up. And if you do, it'll be a lesson learned, but try it because it's very important that you maximize the use of your thermomix. You are letting all the steam go to waste. Why not cook it? And if you don't want flavors to mix, all you need to do is put the parchment paper or the baking paper in between the first layer of the Varoma tray and the Thermomix. And then that way the, veg the vegetables or the flavors don't mix. One thing as well I wanted to say, I don't know if everybody have noticed when we were doing the doughs, the way you do it in the Thermomix, you start always with the liquids and then you move to the dry. And the way why the salt was the last thing we put is because of that, okay? So when you are cooking recipes, and if anybody here tonight wants to start adapting their own recipes, when we are talking about those, I would recommend all the ingredients are at room temperature. Uh, eggs, uh, in this case, the, the yeast or butters, if you are using it, all at room temperature. And keep that in mind that you always start from water, then you add the yeast, flour, and the final ingredients that you would add would be the salt, okay? So that's important. Maybe sometimes you do it with thermomix step by step and you don't consider these things. If you want to start adapting your own recipes, it's an important thing to keep in mind. Maria, how are you doing? Mine is done. Okay, so made it this one is my pizza dough already done. So in the thermomix was two minutes to make. If you make it yourself, it will be 15 minutes. So it's much faster. So then what you do, you get a container that you just brass it a little bit with or a boil in my case, because I always use a boil as I'm Spanish, what can I say? So then, how do we get this dough out of the bowl? So if you turn the bowl this way, you can see that there's a little kind of a wheel in here. So you just twist the wheel, and you're going to see how the dough comes out very easily. I'm going to lift it up. So I'm just twisting, and that is releasing the dough. Can you see? The whole thing came out. Yeah! That's it very little is there. So you just pick up it with your hand, Okay, so this one is very little, it's very easy to do. So remember that little wheel at the bottom of your bowl. So you just twist it around. This one is a dough that is not very sticky, but sometimes maybe you're cooking a sauce or when you're doing pesto, for example, you don't want to wait anything. So the trick to do is you go back to put, I'm going to show you just for you to see. You put your thermomix bowl back in place. You go to a, you go to turbo, okay? And you just turbo one second, that's all you need. There was very little, very, very little dough stuff, but I'm going to show you that now it's completely clean. So that's a good way to clean your uh, blades at the same time, so you are not wasting anything that is nice. So my blades are clean, and I just can collect with my hand whatever dough is left in there. And that's it. Fantastic, that's a great tip. And as you say, Maria, with any, Pesto, maybe any of the sauces, if you're making hollandaise sauce, any sauce like that, one pulse of turbo. Another thing as well to keep in mind, okay? You saw Maria's bread was fantastic. She followed the quantities really accurately. Therefore, her dough was very elastic, the same as mine, you can see. Now, what happens, and instead of being this elastic, instead of being this consistency, you find it has like a little bit liquidy. Okay, in that case, what you can do is add one big spoon of uh, flour and knead it for one more minute. 
If on the contrary, on the opposite, you find it has like little balls, very small little balls, it means it needs a bit of water. One teaspoon of water, or if you want maybe around seven or eight uh, grams, I would say of water, or maybe max 10, and knead it again for one minute. Okay, the important thing is when you find that the texture, if it's not the same texture as this one, look at how elastic it is, this pizza dough that we made today, then keep it maybe adding or subtracting, sometimes maybe one or the other ingredient and knead it again for one minute. And remember that while your pizza dough is down, you cover it in a container and you keep it warm. It's like a little baby. You want it to grow, you want it to become bigger. So that's the way to do it. Just keep it warm in a nice spot or uh, with a cover and let it rise at least for one hour, okay? So that's what I'm going to do, put it here. Okay, so one hour later, here we have, my one is after blowing a lot. I made it earlier. Now, trick for you, how warm is your kitchen? Okay, keep that. I know some people would like to maybe uh, prove it in the oven uh, or basically you need to raise the temperature, particularly in Ireland, it might take a little bit longer for that dough to raise. And we have it here now, Maria. So what are we gonna do with this? What are we so gonna show here them? I have this dough, okay. So it's already done. So I'm not, I'm not a very good pizza maker. I've been doing the only baking things since I have the Thermomix. So I keep things simple. So if you want to spread, stretch your dough, what I do is I'm going to go for a pizza. So I do it like a circle and I press with my hands. And we should be doing that business that the pizza fellows do, but I cannot do that at all. Probably you cannot do it either. So you just stretch it with your hand. Just go around and stretch it, okay? Or if you prefer, let's see what I have in the hand some place. I have a pin rose, probably pin here, yeah? I wouldn't suggest the pizza because you are getting too much air. But if you prefer, you can do that one too. And then what you can do, you're very cheap to buy in the stores or any place. So then you put your pizza in here and you just shape it by stretching it with your hands. And you see, so I'm just stretching it and I have the shape of my tray. So what I'm going to do with this pizza, this half of the pizza, I'm going to do pizza calzone, okay? So the calzone traditionally has meat, but of course you are in power, so whatever you like or whatever your family like, that's what you put as the topping. So I keep going with my pizza while I'm talking to you. So I make my own tomato sauce, right? There are different things that you can do to make your tomato sauce. For example, you can go to the, to the cookie do, or if you have the TM5, you have it in the basic cookbook, the basic tomato sauce, that's it. And then you can just spread in your pizza. Through, during the years, I have, um, I have um, improved that a little bit. So later on, I'm going to send you my version of the pizza of the tomato. So I'm going to have it here, I'll have it here, i make it before. So what I did this morning is my tomato sauce. I, I needed to make pesto and I needed to make my tomato sauce. So what I did, I did in the thermomix the pesto and then uh, I cleaned as much as I could. And when you are doing pesto, let me show you if I can get a clean one. Okay. So when you are doing any, I need a cup for a minute. Okay. If you are doing any sauce like chonies or things like that, put the lid on top of your container. And then when you are pouring this, if anything falls off, it will fall on your lid. It's much cleaner and you are not wasting anything because then easily with your spatula, you can just clean it in. So that's a little trick. So another little trick, as I was telling you, I need to make pesto. I make my pesto and then I make my tomato sauce. So then whatever was left in the pesto in the thermomix bowl is going to give flavor. So you can do the same if you're making bread. You can make your pesto and then without cleaning the thermomix bowl, you make your bread. And those little bits of pesto that are left is going to give flavor to whatever you're doing, okay? So this one is my pizza calzone. And I'm going to make a spoon and just put a little bit of tomato around. Okay, a little more. And then if you have, you know, if you're making, you can make a good amount. So you have tomato sauce for your pizza 
and also tomatoes or to make any dish with pasta dish, any pasta dish. Okay, one sec, but I'm going to get my ingredients up here. Okay, so while Maria is getting her ingredients, I also have my one. My one is going to be a pizza, a margarita pizza. And instead of using the tomato sauce that Maria has made, I'm going to give you a new use that I don't know if you, any of you have made it before. I learned it from the CD. So as you can see here, we learn from each other. We make mistakes and we share that as well. So that's the fun of it. And the recipe, and I have made that hundreds of times, the red pepper and tomato soup. It's one of the recipes I first learned when I got my Thermomix over 20 years ago when my mom bought it. And what happened with that soup, I don't know if any of you have made it. The first step is actually making flour. It's not making the soup, it's making flour with either, uh, you can make the rice uh, flour, maybe chickpeas or lentils. So with that flour, what you are using is thickening the soup. So what I find is that's a fantastic tomato sauce to put on my pa pasta, on my pasta, or on this case today for the uh, pizza. I'm gonna be using that soup that is a thick soup, so I can use it as well for uh, the pizza base. And I'm eating in this case will be lentils because it's what I use lentil flour. How do you make lentil flour? In that recipe, we'll say 40 grams of lentils. Red lentils tend to be really nice, goes really well with the color as well. You blend it for 10 seconds, speed 10. Keep in mind, it's going to be a little bit noisy because the lentils are so small and they spread around the bowl. So just be aware if there is kids in the house and they are a bit maybe sensitive to the noise, just keep that in mind. So that would be another way of if the kids are not eating for you lentils, well, you can hide it on the soup or in the pizza and they don't even know. Okay, so I'm here ready for my calzone. So what I have put in mind is a little mozzarella, a ham, uh, mushrooms, chorizo, of course, and olives, because my children like those. So you are going just to fold it, okay? And you just press on the, on the edges, okay? And let's see if you can do it. So it's the same if you're going to do a paradilla. You first press around the edges, okay? And then you turn, so you press and turn. Let's see if I can do it here. Press and turn. So that will give it a lovely shape like a, like a, like a rope around it. So you just press and turn, press and turn, press and turn until you go all the way around. So this one is my calzone pizza. Fantastic, Maria. Let me show them what I have done. So uh, two tips here. We did one portion of the pizza base. Uh, in my case, it's two of us tonight, so you could make two pizzas. I don't want to eat two pizzas tonight. So what I could do is two things. One, I could use the pizza that I'm after uh, very nicely spread, and I have put the tomato sauce on it, the tomato and red pepper uh, soup on it, or, and then put all the toppings and into the oven. Or what I did before the class to show you was once I had the dough, I could actually put it into the oven like this one for eight, minutes at 180 degrees. And now this is the one I can go and freeze. I can freeze it just like this, the way I have it, or I can put all the toppings and freeze it. And then during the week, I might be busy. I might not have time to cook. Well, all I have to do is put it into the oven. Maria, how long? Five, 10 minutes? You don't pick yes, up more often than me. One, yes, eight minutes will do it. And yes. 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 As such, or you can put the toppings, toppings and then freeze it as well. So depending what you would like to do. I have another little um, suggestion. One second, I don't know if I'm about light today. No, there you go. Oh, you I have another little uh, suggestion, and is that depend? It's very important in which dish you bake the pizza. If you are making the, if you are making it in one of those pizza dishes that that have holes. That's brilliant because it's going to crisp also at the bottom. If you're making it in a, that, like that one, perfect. Thank you, Maria. If you're using a normal oven dish that doesn't have, you know, it's not pierced at the bottom, how can you ensure that your pizza is nice and crispy and is not soggy? 
what I do all the time is to bake it blind for maybe five minutes. It's very important that you pierce the dough before you put it in the oven. Otherwise, it's going to, you know, inflate uh, like a balloon. You know, it, it will be like as you put a pita bread, actually. So you pierce it with a knife, with a fork, and then you bake it blind for about five minutes. And then you take it out and then you put all your toppings. And that way, the dough is going to be crisp all over uh, with no fail. And I just wanted to, to say, uh, why did I discover that this red pepper and tomato soup that Sarah was mentioning is such a great pizza sauce? One of the reasons why is because I have been making that soup nonstop in the last with months because I have been doing lots of uh, online virtual demonstrations and I make that recipe all the time. So I end up with liters and liters and liters of that soup. So I was thinking, my goodness me, I need to find it other uses. So I just put it in the pizza one day as an experiment and everybody loved it and nobody noticed that there were lentils and peppers in that, in that sauce. So I, I kept going. Something else I do with that soup is I, for my children, I bake some pasta and then I use it as a pasta sauce and they love it as well. And they don't know, remember, they don't know they're eating peppers and onions and lentils. That's my little, my little um, tip of the day. Yeah, that, that's, that's the thing is we have all learned for many years cooking with thermomies, learning, being part of the community, sharing tips, and we learned every day. So my pizza is ready, my margarita, so I'm going to put it in. But as I said, if you wanted, this will be the one now you could freeze it or you could also go and like the Cire said, have it ready for yourself before um, the, bread, the, the dough is ready and then you can freeze it the dough and it will be like the one that you buy again. Guys, how much do you pay when you buy the pizza uh, bases in the supermarket? What do they go on it? Please check the back of the any of the food that you eat and look at the names, look at the numbers, look at the letters. When I see letters, I don't know what they mean, but why is there additives and conservants when a lot of the things that we are eating they shouldn't have. And you see that with thermomies. All of you have seen that over uh, probably the time. But I find with these little tips, you even become more aware and more conscious of what you put into your uh, mouth. So Maria, will we show them as well how to make the small empanadillas, the typical yes, the Spanish ones. or Mexican? Yes, once again, working on those, on those ones as you're talking. So half of my dough went into the microphone. And the other half of my dough, I have make it uh, into little balls again for, for you to be easier to make the roll. So little ball, flat it, and then with the roll pin, pin roll, I can never say that, right? Then you uh, stretch it in a circle, okay? So in this one, this one is something that's very popular for the school lunch see here. You can do a very big one or you can do a small ones, okay? So you just flatten it, and I have used my Tomato sauce from before. I have also put uh, a boiled egg that I have chopped up, some pine nuts, and also tuna. You have to make it different. So you put it a little bit in the middle, and the same as we did before with the calzone. You just close it. Can you see? It? Yes, I think I'll, I'll move it. I'm I'll move it. Okay, I'm moving with the, the whole thing. I'll say. So you can see. So you just make it half, like a half a mousse. And then you just press with your fingers around it and make it, like put it around. And we do the same as with the calzone. You press and you turn. You press and you turn to make it. That's one way to do it. Just pressing and turning. I should have wet my fingers a little bit with water so they will I didn't, but I will have pressed it better. Or if you want to, that is normally what I do because I'm always in a rush. You just make the circle. Then you half it. And then you just get a fork. That's the fastest way for me. And you just go around and just press it. And that's how it gets. One thing as well that I'm just thinking, Maria, that they could do if they wanted would be add them. That looks fantastic. Fantastic. That's a very typical Spanish. I didn't, I didn't wet my fingers. That's another thing when you're working with dough and it didn't stack as well. I was like, I'm going to do it now with wet fingers and we'll see. Keep talking. 
if the Spanish one as well, and a lot of Spanish are joining us today, you would use a fork and with the lines of the fork, you would press it. So then that would be like the ones as empanadillas that you buy from the supermarket. One thing I was gonna say. Yeah, that's what yeah. One thing as well, Marie, I was gonna say that they could use for the filling will be the Spanish pisto as or well, pesto yeah. Yeah, or ratatouille, ratatouille, the ratatouille. Yeah. You can put that anything is... that you like or anything that your children will eat. Uh, you can put, um, you can put, as I said, with tomato is the best thing, and anything that goes with tomato, anything that yeah. they will eat in a pizza, how much cheese you can do as well, chorizo you can do as well. So that's yeah, I think uh, Desiree could share with everybody the video that you did for a uh, free to the rescue or a YouTube channel where they'd yes. be able to see as well how to make a desiree, if you don't mind. I think that would be a good recipe that they could try. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a manual recipe, so you will not find it in Cookie Do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so while Maria is finishing her empanadillas, I'm gonna show you that as well. What about if you wanted to use something for dessert or something for the school lunch? And you don't want to use, like I was saying earlier, I don't want to make two pizzas. So I could have half, I could use the roll, like I was probably, you saw me doing earlier, and spread it in a nice square. And I'm using the baking mat. If any of you uh, this month want to have a host uh, a demonstration, you will get that as a host gift. So you will spread it, okay? And what I'm gonna be doing is, I'm gonna be doing the um, cinnamon rolls with the pizza dough. Basically, all I have to do is put a little bit, in this case, it will be butter to make sure that then the uh, cinnamon and the sugar will uh, stick to it. So make sure that you have a uh, butter, um, maybe room temperature or melted. Then all I'm gonna do is gonna be really, really easy. So it's gonna be a spoon, a big spoon, huh? tablespoon of sugar, a tablespoon of cinnamon, and I'm just gonna spread it here, let me, show you just you know sprinkle it around to cover the whole rectangle that i have done with my dough okay so i have it all of it and all as simple as then rolling it and one trick okay i'm gonna give you when you are rolling it make sure that you leave a little bit of a space so that you don't go really tight just go and very gently the dough will be really light so it would still be maybe I've, I'm after putting a little bit of um, flour on the counter as well, so easier to roll. And then you have this lovely roll. Now, how do we make it to make sure that is really nice and the same shapes that you see in the supermarket? Look at what I have here, Delta dental floss. And it's as simple as that, because it will really help you because if you do it with a knife, you're gonna have a few things. Uh, and it's the same when you are cutting cakes. And I know Erica is all here today, so she will be able probably to share with us even more tips. But when you do it with a knife, if it's not in under hot water, what is going to happen is the colors. If you are having a maybe a cake with different uh, layers, or in this case, the cinnamon and the um, dough will get all um, uh, together instead of keeping it separated. So what I find is with the dental floss is very easy. I tend to cut the ends just because I like it to look pretty. So I cut the ends. I just use like if I was doing a knot and pull. So I cut the both ends, let me do it. And basically just put in the um, dental flows underneath it, cross it over, pull, so it cuts it. And now these little ones, I'm gonna be able to make whatever shape. I think you should be able to get at least eight with half of the pizza uh, dough quantity. And I look at the little rolls, I'm making my cinnamon buns or doll or rolls. I have them here. And it's gonna be just a matter of put them, maybe they have them there, one more. I'm gonna be using as well my um, brush to, um, I have egg whites in order for them to look very pretty. So I'm going to be just painting them with a little bit of the egg white or egg yolk if you want uh, to make it with, with both. And just with the pins, with the, um, with the brush, just a little bit of color, okay? So they will look even more 
brown near probably or golden and just we're going to put them into the oven for around 15 minutes but before they go into the oven what you're going to notice is they need to raise a little bit so leave them outside cover them with a tea towel they'll grow and then you can put it into the oven but what i have done is i have another set already in the oven so they'll be ready in the next five minutes i'm just checking it in my pizza is nearly done as well so when they are done you let them cool down and then i'm going to show you as well how to do a beautiful frosting so the frosting i'm going to show you is from the recipe that desiree is going to share in the chat called super soft cinnamon roll i'm going to skip all the different uh, steps i'm going to go into the recipe for those of you that have the tm6 i don't know if you know this trick when i scroll down instead of going and start cooking i can go straight into the step which in this case for the frosting is going to be a step number 11. i click on the 11 and it will jump into that step so that means i'm going into a step 41 out of the 51 steps so you don't have to go next 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 and you don't have to do the whole bit you just can go straight into it the first thing i'm gonna need is gonna be to insert my spot my um butterfly i'm gonna show you something because i don't know if everybody knows that i was doing it in my cooking class on tuesday with the group that i have every week and i was showing them how to place the butterfly correctly so it doesn't stop and here is one thing i shared with the group the other day Make sure if you are doing your own recipes that when you are using the butterfly, it doesn't go over a speed four. Otherwise you'll be having a lovely recipe with a little bit of plastic. You wouldn't be the first one and the last one. So keep that in mind. If you are using the butterfly, maximum speed four. How do you do the butterfly? So you know the blades in the thermomix, there is one that it tends to be longer than the other. Okay, we're gonna have to place the butterfly across, but on that side of the long one. Because then what you do is you move to the side and it locks it to the point that, look, I'm able to hold the whole uh, blades by just holding on to the top of my butterfly. That's how you know the thermomix, the butterfly is correctly placed. And no matter what you're cooking, you'll be able to do it. So I'm going to place it here. Again, some of you, I don't know if you know how to uh, and, uh, put together your... Um, your bowl. Uh, the first time you probably have done it, it was a bit hard and it might not be as easy, but then keep the fingers on the bottom and then move it to the side until you hear the click. So that is done. I'm going to put the butterfly, as I said, on the long part. And the only thing it's going to ask me is to put 45 grams of cream cheese. Well, I didn't have cream cheese yesterday and I was experimenting and saying, okay, what do I have in the fridge? I have these beautiful natural yogurt that I have made using the TM6, the fermentation mode. It's the Australian recipe cooking in the bowl and it's one of the best recipes that I have to say. I love it. I make it most weeks, if not every week. And it's a good way of, again, knowing exactly what goes into your yogurt. So I'm gonna use 45 grams of the yogurt instead of the uh, soft or cream cheese. Okay, so let me, how many of you, how many cook their own, make their own yogurt or have they tried the, um, the Thermomix um, function, the um, fermentation? I would like to know, maybe put it in, in comments and I have put way too much, so let me take a little bit out. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna put is 20 grams of butter. Again, very soft butter from the uh, room temperature. And then I'm gonna go and insert, I'm gonna close it. And for one minute at a speed four. So I let Maria to show the, the next recipe while my uh, butterfly is making the, is mixing the butter with the yogurt. Okay, so my next recipe, my chicken and onions and peppers are cooked. So what you do is you get teriyaki sauce that you can also make your own teriyaki sauce, by the way. And then and just pour it over a little bit. And this is going to be going into our, our little bread rolls. They are, uh, they are just uh, resting at the moment. I'm going to show them to you in a minute. So then what I'll do is I cut them and I show you how it's going to look like or to look in the finished way, okay? 
Well, if it, if Sarah finishes already for her next step. Yeah, I'm, I'm nearly there. Um, okay. All I have to do now and the pizza, let me show you. My pizza is ready as well. This is great timing, guys. We are only 50 minutes and look all, most of our dinner is already made. So my pizza is ready. If you want it to crispier, maybe a little bit more, or if you have added any toppings, I made a margarita. So uh, the cheese is all melted and my cinnamon bones are also ready. Look at how nice they look. I'm gonna leave them two more minutes because I can see they still need maybe um, a minute or two and I'll finish the frosting and then I can show you as well how that will turn. So my uh, yogurt has been with uh, mixed with the um, butter and it has been whipped with the um, butterfly in. How can you use the butterfly as well? It's not only gonna be for wiping cream or for egg whites if you are making the likes of, um, uh, what's the name in English now, the pavlova, okay? But also the aquafava. I know a lot of you maybe like uh, chickpeas, you might even eat a lot of uh, hummus. What do you do with the liquid that comes in the tin? Do you throw it out? Well, I can tell you, if you like the meringue, with the aquafaba, the liquid like this, with the chickpeas, you make amazing meringues. For vegan, or if you don't want to throw out any food, it would be a new tip for you to uh, not waste that food. Maria, you ready? Okay, so I'm going to do my last recipe. So Sarah did her um, scroll rolls, we can call them, with uh, uh, sweets, so yes, with sugar and cinnamon. So I'm going to do the other half of the dough, I'm going to make them, but this time savory. When once again, they are great ideas for school lunches. <laughs> I hate to make school lunches. You can see, I'm always looking for ideas so they don't get um, tired of it. So as I said, I cut the dough. I more or less with my hands and make it a rectangular shape. I put it on the baking mat so then I can see how instead of rolling around the dough because I'm not uh, a professional and I'm not great doing that, I just roll the mat so it's easier. So I'm making first um, length more or less, and then you go for the white. The white, the width, sorry. Okay, one sec. And in this one, instead of putting sugar and cinnamon, we are going to put pesto. So it's just very nice, and it will travel well. So once the, now that the weather is getting better, if we are going for picnics, we can uh, make them. Or as soon as we can have people at home, they are nice with a nice uh, glass of wine. Like a tapa, I suppose. It's a little food. So then you get your pesto. I think this is the way so you can see. It's more or less, it's a rectangular shape. Can you see? I get my pesto and I put it on top. So this is the pesto that I made this morning. And I'm going to show you one little trick, actually. Okay, how many of you have tried to make pesto? How many of you? Anybody? I said, because my oven is also going at the same time. One minute. <laughs> One minute. Okay. So, how a, do you a, make lot make a lot of people, Maria, are saying, are saying people. Okay, okay. And do you take the yard the leaf by leaf? Or do you do the side? I don't have a scissor now. But our side creates a very good idea. So, you just grab the plant, get the scissors, cut it, and you see the mixing bowls. So you don't waste anything. And now in the nice weather, you have water the plant, the leaf will come up again, and you will have again leaves to make pesto. So again, grab the plant, get the scissors, cut the whole thing, and into your thermonic bowl to make your pesto. So then you're not wasting anything. And it's much faster. If anyone, if anyone wants uh, tips about how to save a lot of time and, and make your dinner in a hurry, come to me. I have them all, but I haven't, I haven't created them. They are all just an accident out of desperation. <laughs> but the reality is that that pesto thing does work because the recipe says to pick the leaves. I don't have time to be picking leaves. So I, I, I add the stalks as well. And the flavor is still the same. It's beautiful. Okay, so I have, I'm nearly done with my, with my roll. So I have the pesto inside. I have made like a cylinder shape. Can you see? And I'm going to use the same trick as Sarah did. So 
you can put your dental floss or cooking cooking thread will work as well. So you more or less, if you're looking at the mat, for example, you can see the half of the mat or the half of the roll. One sec, let's go to start. And again, you go half and cut it. Then you go to the one half and cut half again. Can you see? And cut it. And then finally, one that half, you cut it once again. So I get two plus two. One sec. Let me cut it again. Then here. So now you have to press. I didn't press fast. Now it has to come up through through the whole uh, door. So you go half and then half again. One thing I would recommend, Maria, is to have a long string, okay? Yeah. Uh, because it's a lot easier when you are doing the cut. Uh, if you are using the dental floss, will really, really help you if you do it with a long, long string. A string, is that the word in English? Yeah, it is, isn't it? String, yes. Yeah. Okay, back again. So then what you do is you just put them in a tray. You can let them rise a little bit because then they will become bigger. And then uh, I'm going to put them in here. So in any container that you have. So ideally, if you make them and you leave them in here, let them rise for another half an hour and then they become bigger. And these are really tasty. And when you put them as well on the tray, because they're going to become bigger, yes, leave a little bit of space. So I'm going to yeah, it's nine of them, isn't it, Maria? If they want to do the flower in order I to impress, maybe. It's so nine of them, I think. This is my scrolls, pesto scrolls, and cook. Uh, now this is the, the magic of a live TV. One minute. <laughs> <laughs> In the oven, when we started the class, I have to go. And this one, can you see how big they became? Wow, so look at that. Around container, you just put one in the middle and the other ones around, leaving a little bit of space, and that's what it is. Yeah, you will leave. A, you will need at least nine of them yeah, in yeah. order to be able to do that. So one in the middle and eight around. They're asking Maria, how long would they be required to be uh, in the oven? Uh, no, what before going see, to the oven. Depending on the oven, 15 minutes to 20 minutes. You can see when they're starting to get brown on top, they are done because every oven is a different world. So I put it at 180, 50, I said 20, 25 minutes and just watch them the last yeah. five minutes so they don't get too brown. So you just need them to go like from here, a little brown on the top, that's all. Yeah, 10 minutes, that, yeah. that's it. Yes. It's fantastic. And I can tell you, so many people would yeah. be impressed if you present that to them and a party. I don't know, party. I don't know down there and there were some people coming through that door and they were going for it. I said, no, don't touch them. That's it. <laughs> and I was talking about it, that I have to go on to take them out of the kitchen. So that's the result, okay? Fantastic. Well, I can show them as well my my scrolls, the cinnamon ones, and these are ready, okay? But they don't have any of the uh, icing. So I'm gonna show you the icing. I just did the uh, yogurt and, and the um, butter. But one thing I need, the next part of the ingredient is a quarter of the vanilla. So I'm gonna put a tiny bit of vanilla extract. And then it asked me for icing sugar. Oh gosh, I don't have icing sugar. What do I do? Well, I have granulated sugar. So the only thing is, it's very handy that I have the two balls, so I can move it now into my friend for a second. Icing sugar. So icing sugar, for those of you that might be not, how many people, let's ask them, how many people, how many type of sugar do you have in the house? Granulator, caster, icing, which one do you have? Maybe the three of them? Well, I tell you what I do. I buy the uh, granulated sugar, one, because it's a lot cheaper, it's half the price of icing sugar, and two, because I don't like having three or four type of sugar in my drawer. I don't have enough space for three of them. Vicky, I can see you have three. Okay, let me tell you something today, something you might learn today if you were not aware of. Icing sugar is the exact same as granulated sugar. I'm talking about white sugar. I'm not talking about uh, the Mara or maybe brown sugar. It's the exact same. The only thing is it has a Cajun agent in order to keep the sugar fluffy and separated. Because one thing you're gonna find that particularly in Ireland is because of the uh, moist in the atmosphere, it goes really hard. So if you don't use your icing sugar straight away, after a couple of weeks, what you find it gets really hard. So for that, to avoid that, 
what they do is they add this agent and when you see the back of the icing sugar, you will see that. So you're adding extra that is not needed. Now I want to say it's an anti-caking agent. And the thing is, I have to say, I have two types of sugar at home. One is Demerara and one is granulated white. The reason why is because sometimes I like to make my own icing Demerara, which is not easy to find. You can find it in some health shops, but that's the beauty with Thermomix. You can just uh, reduce any type of sugar, brown or white or even golden sugar we bought the other day into powder or into caster sugar, which is, as you know, the, the stage that is in between. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, the syrup, the recipe, I was following the recipe, the last step of the recipe in my TM6, but I'm going to come out of it. And manually, I'm going to go onto the scales and I'm going to make my own icing sugar. I need 60 grams for the recipe. And when I make an icing sugar, two tips, ladies or gentlemen in the group. One, you don't need, uh, you need the bowl to be really well dried, okay? So you could do here the turbo and make sure then if there is any um, water in the bowl, it will go to the side. And second tip, when you're making the ice and sugar sometimes, and the same with the flowers, when you're making flowers with your thermomix, you find that a little bit maybe comes out of the actual measuring cup, which is a good thing because otherwise the air wouldn't go out or go in. So we know it's working, particularly if you are making maybe a uh, mayonnaise, it will be really good for the uh, oil to be dripping. So one tip I'm gonna give you, look, kitchen paper, my measuring cup in between the lid and the top. I place this on top. So I'm gonna put the scales. In this case, I need 60 grams. So let me put the 60 grams onto the bowl. And the syrup set it really well. So I'm gonna go back into my main screen. The syrup set it really well. If granulated to make it caster, it will be around 10 seconds, a speed 10. I'm gonna go with 20 seconds, a speed 10 to make it icing. So if you bear with me 20 seconds, manually you can do this in any of the thermomixes no matter what models you have and all the way to speed 10. That I would like to mention a comment that uh, Erica has made about pesto uh, which is a brilliant comment Erica thank you so much uh, you don't need to make pesto particularly with basil you can use any other herb and uh, I have to say I'm the queen of spinach pesto and again it's not because uh, there is no sophisticated reason it's just because out of i, I could call it uh, efficient time i can just say it's just laziness <laughs> Sarah, show us yeah or not having uh, i've been in demos where the person didn't have enough basil and we use rocket the rocket the flavor is not as nice so maybe mix it with something else I have used lettuce to make my pesto. I have used, I think it was one of the tips one of the advisors gave us in the past, the green leaves from the carrot, you can use them for pesto. Wild garlic, if you have wild garlic near you now that it's spring, it will be a good one as well. Dande, dandelion, they are telling us. Dandelion on this time of the year, Una. Yeah, Una gave us that yeah. tip. So that, that's my icing sugar done, okay? And as you see, there is no funny smell in the house and so no one is going to think I'm doing something weird. So just to end the recipe, and I know we are only five minutes ahead after, so I my recipe is still bookmarked. So all I have to do is click on the green book and now it's asking me for 60 grams of sugar, icing sugar, which I have from my bowl. So I'm just going to add it all into my bowl. Fantastic. I still have the butterfly in. All I do is now whip it for 30 seconds at a speed four. So, Maria, you wanted to show us your rolls? Yes, I have here in my So, another thing that I wanted to say about the pesto, I have to finish this up. The recipe says like around 150 grams of olive oil, but sometimes in my case, I use it quite a lot. So it keeps very green, but if you don't use it a lot, it becomes a little bit darker because it's oxidized. So a little trick is to put a little bit less olive oil when you're making the pesto. And then on top of the pesto, just put a little bit of uh, olive oil when it's into the container. So that will preserve it, okay? Great tip. Another, another tip. So here I have my chicken teriyaki balls. They're little. So these two, I left them steam. So they are softy, right? While I put these two 
in the oven while I, while I was cooking the pizza. So they are like crunchy. You cannot hear it, but they are crunchy. So they are little bites that so they are nice if you want to have with your glass of wine, as I will be doing in a minute, or if you want to use them for a school lunch. So they are really tasty, okay? So they are here. So that's one of them. I'm going to show you as well my cartana a minute. I'm trying to I have so much food. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yes. So this is my pizza calzone. Can you see? Hold it there. Yeah, your pizza calzone. This is the margarita. Okay. I also have the one that I have proved beforehand that it will be going into the oven for during the week. And I have my lovely cinnamon rolls with the icing as well. So, oh my God, guys. An hour. How many recipes we have shared with you today? It was I'm one day. I have three hungry teenagers in the house to finish all this. <laughs> because normally in a class, you will be trying all these things and nothing will come back home. But in this case, we will have to eat it. How bad? Yeah. So <laughs> I think, ladies, I'm going to invite everybody, uh, the three of us, and everybody that has joined us today to do a cheers with us. A uh, fantastic achievement. It's not the thousand. What we are celebrating today is the community that we have got in the south of Ireland. What I have seen here today, we have people from all around the world joining us in this community where we support each other. You have seen we do classes. We are doing thermovention next week. So if you haven't got your tickets, join us worldwide. We are sharing with a lot of people around the world different tips. And in this case, the three of us are Spanish. So you'll be learning a lot of the Spanish recipes and you'll be doing chair yoga with me if that's something that you want to try. So ladies, it's Lanta. It has been fantastic. Well done. Salud. Salud. Or cheers. cheers. Enjoy the holiday and eat a lot of pizza and a lot of dough. <laughs> Nice Talk to see to you, you soon, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Thank bye. you, Trini. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>